Andy is here, he is an advocate of the new communism. This is a new synthesis that is a breakthrough from what came before. And Andy is also the co-initiator and spokesperson for Refuse Fascism. So please sit back, get ready for this talk. It's gonna last about 45 minutes. And please welcome Andy Z. We're so glad to have you. I was told it was cold in here, but I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the heat. <laughs> so once again, for the, let me hear a round of applause. First of all, for Reiko for standing up to those people and for the rest of the staff of Revolution Books. And since Professor Simon is here, I'll thank him, but I want to thank everybody who's uh, in those videos, uh, young people, the older folks, everybody. They're really uh, heartfelt statements. But I do want to say to that one woman who said uh, that communism rules, what I have to say to her is we're working on that. Okay. So hang on. All right. So I've got to tell you, one of my favorite things to do is to be and speak at Revolution Books, whether here in Berkeley or in New York. And this is so, even as the occasion of this talk is to oppose the ugly assault on this Revolution Books in Berkeley. But we just saw that vicious and vile misogynist personal assault on Reiko, as well as the staff, that culminated in a vicious threat to burn down the store itself. These fascists will not stop revolution books. They will not deter us from why this is a precious and essential place which embodies the future. And know their assault will not diminish either our sense of purpose or our joy in what is represented by revolution books. We mean both words of our name, revolution and books. This isn't a marketing slogan. It's what we are, and it embodies for whom and for what we exist. This is a bookstore about the world and for a radically different and better world, a place that is guided by a new and emancipatory understanding of the first word of our name, revolution, as it has been re-envisioned in the new communism developed by Baba Bakian, the revolutionary leader, who it should be said is a son of Berkeley, <laughs> the Berkeley High Yellow Jackets and the University of California, Berkeley. I do note that civic pride in all your t-shirts and sweatshirts. <laughs> it's remarkable. You don't see that so much in New York, <laughs> except from the tourists. <laughs> These fascists will not diminish the excitement of digging into the rich and varied explorations of the natural and the social world that are contained in all of these books that surround us, or in the engagement with how I'm sorry, engaging with each other and the thrill of dialogue and debate over the world we live in and how we could together change it. No, we will not and we must not let Trump, Pence, and their fascist thugs turn revolution books and the potential <coughs> that it and the intellectual, the political, and the cultural life that is contained within its walls into a 21st century burning of the Library of Alexandria. And we will stand against such attacks wherever they occur. The ugly spectacle of these two fascists who assaulted Sister Reiko in the store with their threat of arson conjures and concentrates the present reality that not only revolution books faces, but that everyone faces. And every person and any person whose work, whose morality, whose values aspire to a world of diversity of overcoming oppression of all peoples, regardless of their nationality, their race, their gender, or their beliefs. All of this is under siege today. The harsh fascist future that these thugs acted in service of 
impacts everyone who values critical thinking, scholarship, and engagement. If you appreciate the arts and what they contribute to our being human, to the tremendous import of the imagination in the life of the mind and to all of society, this is a fight for you. The assault on revolution books is an attack on truth itself, on the importance of the scientific method, of why evidence matters, and even on the existence of objective reality. These are crucial tools, essential modes of thinking, without which, at this moment in human history, our species and the planet might not survive. And let us not step over that this is an attack on the radical discourse and struggle that is the legacy of Berkeley, even as we understand that this fight is larger than Berkeley. This is an attack on all that I've just said, and as such, it is no accident that Revolution Books has been their target 10 times in the last six months. Why? Because Revolution Books embodies all of these values of which I've been speaking. And beyond that, it will and continue to be the political and the intellectual and the cultural center of a movement for an actual revolution to bring about a radically new liberatory world. And that world, or frankly, any world that is not the fascism that is being cemented into place today, depends on all of us joining together to defend this door as one front in the great challenge of this year which is to drive this fascist Trump-Pence regime from power. The vicious schools that attack revolution books are not only emboldened and unleashed by this regime, but they are a strike force, a reactionary, revanchist movement whose purpose is to intimidate and bludgeon people to accept and capitulate to this fascism. As part of its mission, Revolution Books has been a key site, a gathering place, where people come to learn about and dig into this fascism, its roots, and how to stop it. Revolution Books in New York held the first forum in the country on the fascism of this regime just one month after Trump's election. And today, both the New York store and this store in Berkeley are featuring the film, The Trump-Pence Regime Must Go. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. A better world is possible, a talk by Bob Avakian. This is a must-see film to understand what we face and what we must do to stop it. So we are not surprised by their hatred for revolution books. And we will not be deterred. We will not back down because of all of you because of all the people who can and must be rallied to revolution books, to defend it. We should see the fight to defend revolution books as one part of a great cause, an unprecedented struggle to recognize, to organize, and to act decisively to stop the fascism that is unfolding right before us. Everyone can be a part of spreading the word and forging the principled unity so that the million or more people who learned of the attack on revolution books through the videos and through the media can become part of a great movement to stand not just for revolution books, but against the whole regime. Look, fascism rules through reliance on open terror and violence, trampling on civil and legal rights, violating the democratic norms of society, wielding the power of the state, and by mobilizing organized groups of fanatical thugs to commit atrocities against the masses of people, particularly groups of people identified as enemies, as undesirables, or as dangers to society. And books and bookstores are defini definitely all three of these things. We should recognize that the assault on revolution books is not an isolated occurrence. The night after the attack on revolution books, a store window was smashed and an outdoor bookshelf burned and torched to the ground at the Groundwork Book Collective in San Diego. And there is a virulent connection between these fascist groups and the project of the Trump-Pence regime to consolidate fascism in this country. This is deadly serious, and I'm gonna to return to our responsibilities in relationship to this 
a bit later. So it is, though, with a serious purpose and responsibility that brings me here to Revolution Books in Berkeley, yet as I said, it does not diminish my appreciation and joy at being at Revolution Books. Because the walls around us hold a curated collection of books that matter in a place that matters. Books that are the repository of the experience of people all over the world and over the millennia. Stories of lives and of dreams. But more, Revolution Books is a place that is a bridge between the world that is today and what really could be. Let me read you something that animates Revolution Books. And I quote, let's imagine if we had a whole different art and culture. Come on, enough of this bitches and hoes and SWAT teams kicking down doors. Enough of this get low bullshit. And how come it's always the women that have to get low? We already have a situation where the masses of women and the masses of people are pushed down and held down low enough already. It's time for us to get up and get on up. Imagine if we had a society where there was a culture Yes, it was lively and full of creativity and energy, and yes, rhythm and excitement. But at the same time, instead of degrading people, it lifted us up. Imagine if it gave us a vision and a reality of what it means to make a whole different society and a whole different kind of world. Imagine if it laid out the problems for people in making this kind of world and challenged them to take up these problems. Imagine if art and culture, too, movies, songs, television, everything, challenge people to think critically, to look at things differently, to see things in a different light, but all pointing to how we can make a better world. Imagine if people who created art and culture were not just a handful of people, but all of the masses of people, with all of their creative energy unleashed, and, at, and that the time were made for them to do that, and for them to join with people who are more full-time workers and creators in the realm of art and culture, to bring forward something new that would challenge people, and that would make them think in different ways, and that would make them be able to see things critically and from a different angle, and would help them to be uplifted and see their unity with each other and with people throughout the world in putting an end to all the horrors that were taught are just the natural order of things. Imagine all of that. These words are from Bob Avakian, published in Basics from the Talks and Writings of Bob Avakian, and they come from the film Revolution, what it's all about, why it's possible, and why it's necessary. And for those of you who are students, I reverse the order of that title. But you can uh, get a copy of it here. These are values and these are ways of being that the first communist revolutions in the 20th century began. But those revolutions no longer exist. They were defeated by the strength of the prevailing imperialist system as well as their own limitations in understanding and practice. After these defeats, determined that the struggle for total emancipatory revolution would not die, Bob Avakian went to work. Through over 40 years of study and struggle, practically leading the movement for revolution and developing the theory that could win and bring about a fully liberating society, he developed a new communism. Sifting through that previous experience, taking on board the changes in the world since, engaging in work from, engaging work from other fields of inquiry, he developed a new synthesis of communism that really could bring about a far better world, a radically new society in which people could collectively go to work on overcoming all the oppressive and exploitive divisions that exist today, a society that could, at long last, achieve human emancipation all over the globe. But look, we live today in a moment where we are staring down the barrel of an American fascism that imperils lives here and around the entire world. Last week, I hosted the great Kenyan writer Gugiwa Tiango at Revolution Books in New York, reading from his prison memoir, Wrestling with the Devil. And a young woman from Kenya came up to me afterwards and said, you know, the American people have to realize that when they vote, it doesn't just affect them. It harms everyone in the world. And today, tens of millions of people flee their homes to escape war, 
famine, unnecessary disease, all brought about and exacerbated by the prevailing capitalist imperialist system. These are people. They have dreams. They have contributions to make. Their lives are not less precious than American lives. <laughs> 65 people drowned last Saturday when their boat from Turkey capsized in the Mediterranean. Famine stalks Somalia and even northern Kenya. A genocide is taking place in Ghouta, Syria, with yet a second genocide in the offing in the Congo as the vicious gangs and militia compete to provide the coltan for our cell phones and electronic devices. Look, when such horrors ricochet around the world with the threat of nuclear war and environmental devastation hanging in the balance as the Trump-Pence regime barrels forward, that there is a revolution books imbued with the hallmark of a new communism that either the whole world gets free or in people everywhere are emancipated or none of us do. This is a crucial breakthrough in understanding of the new communism developed by Baba Vakin. And this is one reason why Revolution Books features voices and literature from the countries and the diasporas all over. Think about what a difference the kind of vision and approach to creating a radically new culture that was in that imagined quotation that I just read. How it opens up vistas for people that otherwise would be hidden. Think about this vision and then contrast it with the self-obsessed culture of today. Imagine if this new culture laid out the problems for people in making this kind of a world and challenged them to take up these problems. Right there you have a glimpse of a key point of departure in the method and approach of Bob Avakian. Putting the problems of the revolution, of creating a whole new society before the people, not failing to lead by asking the right questions and providing orientation, but involving masses of people to collectively work on the solution. This involves not just culture, but the economy, the form of, uh, of a radically different state that would ultimately get beyond the need for states, education, the media, and tackling all forms of, pre of oppression and the backward ideas that reinforce that oppression. The vision and plan for this is available right here in Revolution Books in the Constitution for a New Socialist Republic in North America, authored by Bob Avakian. <laughs> this method and approach, which runs through the strategy and vision for the new society, is also what we strive to apply every day here at Revolution Books. What kind of engaged atmosphere do we need? How do you approach putting these questions before people? By what method and approach do, you, do people tackle the biggest questions? What kind of world do we want and what kind of people could we actually be? How do we overcome the huge divisions between peoples that so press on humanity today? By what method and approach do we identify and dig into the fundamental problem we face with this capitalist system and how it shapes all the other oppressions that have plagued people over thousands of years. Why and how is revolution the solution? How do we forge the kind of principled discourse and the demarcating struggle over ideas, philosophy, strategy, and the plans to fight the power and transform the people for a revolution? While this method and approach is what the staff of Revolution Books strives to model, the best way to get into this is to watch the films of Bob Avakian and to read Basics and the book The New Communism. Might as well learn it right from the source and we have it available here and then come in and we'll get into it with you. The heart of this new communism is a scientific approach to all of reality and to revolution in particular. It is a qualitative breakthrough in putting communism on a consistently and thoroughly scientific foundation. Now, why does this matter? Our day is Skybreak in her book, Science and Revolution, on the importance of science and the application of science to society, the new synthesis of communism and the leadership of Bob Avakian, which we feature here at Revolution Books, paraphrases the scientist and uh, director of the Museum of Natural History in New York, Neil deGrasse Tyson, saying, quote, science allows you to confront and identify problems 
to recognize problems and figure out how to solve them rather than to run away from them. She continues, it's a tool, science, a very powerful tool. It's a method and approach for you being able to tell what's true and what corresponds to reality as it actually is. And then she goes on to make this point, quote, without science, you can only say what you as an individual think, what you as an individual think reality is. Or maybe you can say what a whole bunch of people think reality is. Or maybe you can say what a government or a religious authority or some other authority might tell you reality is like. But that doesn't make any of it true. Without science, you are at the mercy of being manipulated, of having your thinking manipulated and not being able to tell what's right from what's wrong, what's true from what's false." End quote. Now, no one can accuse Donald Trump of being the least bit concerned with what's true. <laughs> and no one in their right mind can think that Mike Pence, who is a biblical literalist, and as such doesn't believe in evolution, is concerned with actual evidence and objective reality. And cabinet secretaries Pruitt, DeVos, Carson, Zinke, Perry, and that insanely cruel Trump-appointed Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch constitute a cabal of Christian lunatic fascists who actually deny reality while slamming their fascist unreal reality down the throat of the world. So to this regime, and the idiot thug duo who threatened to burn down revolution books wearing their Trump, Trump make America great again caps while spewing their white supremacist, vile anti-woman slurs at the staff of revolution books. To them, revolution books is an anathema which must be destroyed. A bookstore whose mission is providing the books and the engagement where people can scientifically dig into the fundamental problems of this system and discover and learn how to fight it and ultimately replace it through revolution is everything these fascists fear. Revolution books is the place to dig into the whys and the whats of the fascism that grows around the world, and especially here in the US with the Trump-Pence regime. At RB, through the work of BA, people can dig into the roots of this fascism in the whole history of the US. But drilling down further into the nature of this system reveals why the core intractable problems, intractable problems, such as the oppression of black people, of immigrants, of women, of the destruction of the environment, what we call here the five stops, cannot be solved under this system. This is why we need a revolution. Our ultimate objective is, as I've been saying, for a radically different future, other than the future of fascism and Trump, of Trump-Pence, or for that matter, a return to the future of the normal oppressive workings of the capitalist imperialist system. Rather, we advocate for a leap into a third, a different and far better future through a revolution aiming for a world where humanity could truly flourish. The threat to burn down revolution books must be taken seriously. First, because it is the site of the engagement and popularization of the theory and the leadership for a revolution, leading to a radically new society on the road to human emancipation and the work and the leadership of Bob Avakian, which I've been speaking about. But also because the threat to burn down bookstores and actually attempting to do so in the case of the Groundwork Book Collective in San Diego is a serious warning to the growing bold initiative of the fascist, of the fascist remaking of society. And now I just have to say something, not to the academics who are here or who made statements, but I want to say something to the academics and others who the staff of Revolution Books spoke to over the last week and who said to the staff people that they're really sorry that this threat was made against Revolution Books and they wished us well. <laughs> But they see no imminent danger or reason to step out themselves to denounce us and to take up the fight to drive out the Trump-Pence regime. To these people, we have to say, wake the fuck up. Get your head out of the sand or wherever it's lodged and look at what's happening. Not just to revolution books and to the radical thought, 
but across the board to the 11 million immigrants living in terror right now, terrorized by the sort of deportation and detention, to women who Mike Pence says will lose the right to abortion very soon, to the youth who Trump told the police to treat rough, to the incredibly draconian repressive laws that are being promulgated at all levels of this society, and most especially to the people of the world who face environmental devastation, flooding, famine, and possible nuclear war at the hands of this fascist regime. And this isn't the half of it. So don't say that fascism can't happen here. And don't reassure yourself that because you don't want to get out of your comfort zone, because you, can, because you can get by because fascism hasn't directly affected you yet, that it isn't fascism. If you adjust and accommodate to the great injustice done to others, you are aiding and abetting fascism's progress. So, you can deliver this message yourself or you can deliver it from me and from the rest of us that refuse fascism. But the hour is late and we can't mince words. And I deliver these words with big arms welcoming people who've look the scans and look the way or put their head in the sand or elsewhere, I say to them, come on board. But there are no excuses now. The evidence is in. Yes, the threats to burn bookstores here is not May 10th, 1933, when 20,000 books were burned in Nazi rallies across Germany. But the echo is pregnant today as the fascists aim to legitimize fascism on the campuses under the false flag false flag rubric of free speech. Critical thinking, intellectual rigor, and reason are under attack from a regime that is in control of all three branches of the government and today commands two thirds of the state houses and is backed up by a fascist social base that hasn't shrunk but only hardened in its resolve with a core of lunatic, dangerous followers who will stop at nothing to get their white supremacist, xenophobic, women-hating, fascist America cemented into law and power. The political form of Christian fundamentalism that we accurately call Christian fascism and the white supremacist bullying of America first fascism of Donald Trump do necessarily have to go after reason rational thought, and a scientific evidence-based approach to reality. The breadth of literature that you see, serious studies of the roots of white supremacy, of the environment, of the origins and continued prevalence of gender oppression, of the division of the world into oppressor and oppressed nations, of in, to imperialist and neo-colonial nations, are all like daylight and a cross to these vampires who ironically wrap themselves in the cloak of religion. But over the last 25 and a half, 25 plus years, Bob Avakian has been deeply analyzing the rise and development of fascism in the world with a focus on its development in the United States. He has made the point that we communists who are working to bring about a total revolution will fight to uphold and defend the aspect of the enlightenment that holds that the world is knowable in all its complexity and which promotes science and the scientific method but with two critical differences. And first I quote B.A., quote, the truth will not set us free in and of itself, but we will not get free without the truth, end quote. The truth will not just inevitably win out, it must be fought for. And at Revolution Books, we both appreciate and engage philosophy, art, and ideas in their own right, but not just for their own sake. For those of you who have seen Raoul Peck's, the quote, the, uh, Raoul Peck's film, The Young Marx, this film shows Marx's development when he actually says in the film what he wrote in the uh, introduction, the foreword to the uh, 10 Theses on Fireback. The philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point is to change it. The critical principle which B.A. has fought for up against all forms of reformism and social democracy is that for ideas, even correct ideas, to become operative in society as a whole, there has to be a struggle, a class struggle, and ultimately a revolution. And second, 
We do not uphold the belief that the, of the Enlightenment that it is the role of the enlightened to civilize backward peoples and nations, the so-called white man's burden, which regards the enlightenment as a positive instrument and in justification for colonialism and imperialist domination. But at the same time, at Revolution Books, we do appreciate the importance of scientific, intellectual, and artistic engagement in its own right and seek to learn from all of human experience, as I said, and in this, Avakia makes an important break with previous communist theory, with the understanding that the truth does not have a class character. What is true is so because it corresponds to reality as it actually is. So this is some of the theoretical underpinning and the foundation for why you sit in this incredible place with the breadth of books and the experience of humanity surrounding you. This is why there are programs at Revolution Bookstores with authors and scholars from around the world. It's why, for example, as Reiko brought out, that we had deep discussions after a reading by the young Ghanaian-American writer Yajesi, who read from her book, Homegoing. This is a book that tells of an epic journey that takes you from slavery in Ghana back and forth through the Middle Passage to slavery in the US and all the way up to today as it goes back and forth between the branches of the family that stayed in Ghana and those who were here. So the point of this telling about her in particular is that Revolution Books, as we say, is a bookstore about the world and for a radically new world. People from all over the world come into Revolution Books and these stores are a site that helps spread the new communism around the world. And this too matters as there are forces in the world today who are right now struggling to take up and apply this new communism to their part in the world revolution. And I spoke before of Gugi Watiango, who's a friend of revolution books, a writer and a literary theorist. And he opens the first volume of his memoir with the following epigraph from the poet Martin Carter. I quote, I do not sleep to dream, but I dream to change the world, end quote. And Bob Avakian has written, quote, if you don't have a poetic spirit, or at least a poetic side, it is very dangerous for you to lead a Marxist movement or be the leader of a socialist state, end quote. So Revolution Books is a place that gives flight to the imagination for a world that really could be. But let's go back again and recall those bigoted, distorted faces of those two fascists who threatened revolution books, who called themselves Western chauvinists. <laughs> Western chauvinists. <laughs> you know, you get, you, I'm going to diverge, you, you get used to saying this stuff over and over again, and then all of you, once in a while, you look down and you say, is this for real? Is this somebody make this shit up? Western chauvinists, which is nothing but a blood drenched concept that is a more pompous expression of what Trump did, where he called Haiti and Africa shithole nations. But contrast this poisonous chauvinism with the following from Basics, which is one of the things that guides us here at Revolution Books, and I quote, internationalism, the whole world comes first. The contrast the contrast between two futures couldn't be sharper. Fascism versus a store and a movement for revolution dedicated to a scientific approach of knowing and changing the world. A store dedicated to the emancipation of humanity. On one side, a fascist regime headed by a narcissistic, psychopathic, racist, sexual predator who epitomizes the ignorance of America as he pursues his winners and losers paradigm. And behind him, as refusefascism.org has put it, is a section of powerful ruling forces who see in Trump and Pence the vehicle for an American fascism. As we've said in Refuse Fascism, this is an American fascism. Manifest destiny and American exceptionalism. A fascism wrapped in the Bible taken literally and the American flag, saturated with racism, misogyny, and xenophobia 
with a legion of puffed up turds, dried up revenge filled thugs who cling to their delusions of superior superiority now backed up by the world's most powerful state. And on the other side is everything I've been spoken about that is concentrated in this store. And this is not just about the staff or the place or the spokesperson, although it is all of that. It's really about all the people who hate injustice and who hate all forms of oppression and exploitation. It's really about the aspirations of humanity to live in a far better and different world. It's about the science, the vision, and the strategy, and the leadership for a truly emancipatory revolution. So here we are. What's it going to be? That's up to us. Are we going to stand against this regime and its goons? Are we going to struggle with our friends, our families, our co-workers, our teachers, and our fellow students, and indeed with everyone and everybody that we can unite to broadly drive this regime from power? And are we going to struggle with our friends, our families, our co-workers, our teachers, and our fellow students, and even ourselves, to engage Baba Vakian's new communism, the most radical liberatory theory for transforming the world and ourselves in the process. A theory that is a revolution in thought and a breakthrough in strategy and conception of a new society on the road to human emancipation. Yes! All right, so that there is a way out of the madness and the horror is a cause for celebration and revolution books is the place for that party. Thank you. Oh.